What's up, modern steaders? Right now, me and Olivia are gonna get ready to make our kombucha. We got a few steps we gotta do to get everything ready, and then later on, when Gina gets home, we can make the kombucha. So first, we have our glass jar we wanna use, and it's got a spigot on it. It might look like it's a stainless steel spigot. It's just a plastic one plated with chrome. We wanna get rid of the plastic spigot because the acid from the kombucha can break it down and get all the plastic in there or get the chrome in your drink. So we gotta take that off first. So down in there, there's a nut. You wanna spin that that way. I'll keep my hand inside. Yep. Getting looser and looser. It is, you're almost there. Awesome. Wow, it feels so light now. Yeah, plastic, see? So is this? Plastic junk. Then we went on Amazon and we bought a nice stainless steel spigot. I'll leave a link in the description below if you guys need your own stainless steel spigot. I'll show you what it comes with here in the package. Got your nice spigot. Oh, that's pretty. That one's pretty. Yeah. And then we got. It is pretty. Though. Well, we can save that one. I don't know if we'll ever use it again, but we'll have it. We got our rubber washers to keep it from leaking. And some grommets. And then a screen so it doesn't plug up. If you want to take off the blue piece on that one, I'll take off the blue on this one. This is just to keep the stainless steel from getting damaged. Let's stick that one on. Oh cool. I thought need, came in blue. No, one washer. Or one rubber sail. So we're gonna stick that in there. And then I'm gonna do the nut. Alright, so would you wanna spin it mm -hmm. and tighten it up? Is it getting hotter at all? Yes. Alright, hold up. That might do it. I'll put some water in there and we'll see if it leaks or not. Let's see if we can show you inside. Have that last piece, Louise, the strainer piece. We're gonna stick it over the end, just to show it you better. It's just a screen. It just sits on the end. Off. Wait, that's off. Yep. No, I'm telling you. How you know is you by someone telling you and teaching you. Little pulley thing. I don't see it leaking, so that's a good thing. If you want to open it up and see if it works, let's get it. Shut it. Awesome. We're using Peru tea, I think that's how you pronounce it. This is an ancient form of tea. What they would do is they actually bury the tea in the ground so it starts to ferment, which is even better. So we're putting pre-fermented tea into our kombucha, which ferments it even more. So this tea is supposed to give it a better taste and make for a better kombucha. So we're gonna try this one for our first time. You're gonna need one cup of sugar. The sugar in it is to help the fermenting process. When you go, when you go to drink it, there's really not gonna be any sugar left in it. All the yeast and bacteria has gotta have eaten the sugar. So don't worry about that part. With the stuff like this, kind of. Kind of. Four cups of water. Wow. Prior to making a 
tea color. Yeah. And we will set our kitchen timer for 15 minutes. We have a pasture raised chicken cooking in the crock pot. Oh, it smells good, don't it? Mm-hmm. Now that it's defrosted somewhat, I'm gonna stick some Kerrygold butter on it. And the only other thing we're gonna put on there is some pink Himalayan salt. That's the best part about pasture-raised meat. You don't need to do much to it and it has awesome flavor. Get all the goodness out of them. Dump the sugar in a little bit at a time while you stir it. Or do you want to dump the sugar in? I want to dump the sugar in. It's getting happier and happier. Got to make sure it dissolves good. Don't get too crazy and make a mess. Can you feel it still in there? Did you get it all? I'm not sure. Should I get it all on the side? I don't see any. Can you feel it? I don't really. I only feel a little bit. No, well, you did a good job dissolving it. Our recipe calls for a gallon of tea, all total. So we have four cups over there. There's 16 cups in a gallon. So we need how many more cups? It's a good math question for you, math cat. <laughs> We need 16 cups total. We have four cups right here. How many more cups do we need? 12. Awesome, so we gotta get 12 more cups of water. Just water? Yeah, we need just water. Hot boiled water? Uh, nope, we can just do cool water now. A plus four equals. Now you need to let this part cool off before you add your SCOBY. And we'll be back with Gina when we're ready for that. While we got a break in the rain for a little bit today, we're gonna go mow the lawn. It's getting pretty tall, especially where the chicken tractors have been run. We need to fuel up first. After talking with Ranglistar at the Mother Earth News Fair about tractors, I really do like the setup of the Yanmar tractor and where his fuel filler neck is. If you guys didn't watch that video, I'm gonna post that video right here. Click on it and go over and watch the conversation me and Ranglistar had. It was a pretty good one.
check on the Icelandic chickens and see how they're doing in New York City. All right, let's go see how they're doing. See if we can poke in the window and see what's up. Can you see in that window? There are the ducks. They're hiding in the corner. Why, how many are over there? I don't know, I can't see any through this window. So I got all the Icelandic chicks successfully in New York City last night. They all seem to sleep good in there. I saw them get up on the roosting poles. It was too dark. Every time I tried coming out here, before it was completely dark, the chickens would come out of New York City and hand me when I came out of the house. It was like, oh, so I couldn't get any videos of it. But we got them in there. We left them locked up, all the chickens, inside New York City. So that way, the new Icelandic chicks will realize that this is home and this is where we need to go at night. Tomorrow, we'll let them out and we'll let them run around. Right? Uh-huh. Is that going to be fun watching them in here? Uh-huh. Yeah, and hopefully we'll have some baby ducks pretty soon. Oh, I see a nest. There's a duck laying in the nest and one right next to the nest. So both the female ducks are under there? Yep. Awesome. Hopefully in a few more weeks, we'll have some baby ducks running around. Uh -huh. That'll be fun, huh? Uh-huh. So what's that for? It's for the kombucha. Did you just make that for the kombucha? Uh-huh. Awesome. We didn't have a big enough elastic, so look what Olivia's made. Woohoo! We can use that from the kombucha tonight. Awesome. Good job mowing the lawn. High five. Me and Olivia are going to try making a new roasted broccoli recipe. What is it called for? Did you say olive oil? Yeah. What else do I need to get out? A clove of garlic. Okay, we got minced garlic in the fridge. Lemon juice. Lemon juice, we got that in the fridge. Sea salt. Sea salt. We got our pink Himalayan salt. We like that. You want to get out a cookie sheet? Mm-hmm. There's the kombucha waiting. Or should I say the black tea for now. All right, we got some broccoli because ours isn't ready yet. Rip them off the so we'll cut them a little bit first and then you can rip them off the rest of them. We need our chicken bowl. Chicken bowl, chicken bowl. Ch -ch -ch chicken bowl. And then you can rip them off. When I was at the grocery store today. I made sure to buy the ones with the shortest bit of stock because you're paying for them by weight. I don't want to pay an extra, an extra whatever for all that weight. The chickens don't even like to eat this part. They'll eat the leaves. Mm. Two teaspoons of olive oil, so. Two teaspoons of olive oil, ready? Mm. One glug. Two glugs. Two glugs. Uh, so glug, 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 glug. Teaspoons. And then a little bit of salt. And then how much garlic does it call for? We cheat with our garlic. <coughs> smells much? really garlicky. Garlicky. Mmm. Some good stuff. <laughs> it's good for you. <laughs> Cooking it this way, the meat just falls pretty much right off the bone. Just look at that. It just comes off in huge chunks, which is nice. So by cooking it this way, you don't really have much meat left on there. It falls right off the bone. And I don't know if you can see it. If you cook it frozen, all that water is still left in there and the juices from the bird. So it makes for a really good bone broth. It's gonna happen from the rain, Olivia. Look at the rain. Jesus. It's like we live in a rainforest. Is it coming in the bedroom? No. Good. Right? It's coming down hard. Did you put your tractor seat down? Nope, it's getting washed. We want to make our kombucha video, but it's raining too loud. 
and I can't get the thing out of the... Ow. Look at it coming down the road. Our little water bar we put in is working and diverting it, but that's just nuts. That one up there is working too, and that one over there is working. No wonder why our road keeps getting washed out. It's like a big air sack from it fermenting in there while well, it's been in the mail. Thanks, big... Doug and Stacy. What if it made a big boom? I think that's why they put it in so many bags. How many bags have you got? Three. Three bags. Three. Ready? I'm nervous. That's four bags. It is? Yeah, there's another bag. That's why the air still hasn't come out. Here we go. Ready to see if we hear any noise. Shh. Did you hear it? Yeah. It smells like... Vinegar. It smells like kombucha <laughs> to me. It doesn't smell. <laughs> oh, why are you coughing like... Because I got all the way in my throat. Because you inhaled it too much. Does it have enough to oh. There it goes. Here comes the rain again. It looks kind of like a brain. Yeah, and it's a okay. scoby growing. Yay! It's a mother. Mothers are good, right, Olivia? All right, ready to put it's on. It's not the... a mother, it's a scoby. No, it's a mother, because then you get little children. I'm ready to put this on? Did you get your elastic you made? Is that... I mean, you know how to make elastics, because we didn't have a big one. <laughs> Perfect. Nice little spot in the pantry for it. Look at this, it was raining for like, what, five, ten minutes. It's crazy. Look at this. What's that? Oh, these will be fine because they're raised beds so the water will go out of there pretty fast. Right here we have turnips and then carrots. And look at the corn bed, string beans, and our beets. Look, <laughs> the beets are pretty wet. And your radishes are getting it. These beds held up good. Well, they probably sucked into the water. Yeah. Thanks, guys, for watching. We hope you enjoyed today's video. The dinner was pretty good. Now we got to go inside and make some chicken broth. And the kombucha is all set, ready to go, and 7 to 10 days we'll be tasting it. Until next time, we'll see you right back here at... Lum the Acres, a guide to modern home study, self-sufficiency, and freedom. If you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it, it really helps. Our channel's been growing crazy, and that's all because of you guys. So we wanted to thank you for that, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Mm -hmm.